do a mic trick again. So, the next thing to do is drop a blueprint in here. Do that rather than dismantling. Not this shit again. So I like the, the sensitivity on your mouse wheel is just way higher than it should be. It's like only the issue is like when I, when I want it to be sensitive, it's like not sensitive. And when I don't want it to be sensitive, it's sensitive. Space anywhere for a blueprint design, I don't think it'd do. Isn't it like five by five? way to do this rather than like oh taking photo references and going like either to the blueprint designer over there or the one down there over there uh it's just the blueprint designer up here <laughs> only i'll need some uh, modular frame for that Then I can be modifying the blueprint as I'm moving along, and uh, just like update it that way. Frames on this side. Frames haven't been on that side for quite a while.
Right, there it is. Okay, so that one needs to be replaced. The Mark 1 belt going south. I get the uh, new name in there. Right, what's next? Mark 4 and Mark 4. Oh yeah, this is the plastic. One, mark one, mark one. Three mark two mark three. So that's unchanged. And this is the one that definitely has changed. We got two Mark Three belts.
some change. That one unchanged, or is that jumping up? Take that unchanged. Take that mark one, mark one. Oh, we're missing a thing. Alright, this is just very neat belting. <laughs> There's very little factory actually inside there. This is pretty much all like pre planning. But I appreciate the compliment. So it's all Mach 1, so yeah, that's probably unchanged. This stuff is a lot easier to do with blueprints because, like the, the previous playthrough, I was doing this all manually, and it's just very much neater. Next one. Right, this is where I have some adjustments to make. So, the bottom one is Mark One. Mark one. I know that's Mark two up there. Ah, it does change levels. Right. So second one up gets changed to Mark one. Next one is also Mark 1, but it's uh, going to be at a different level in the blueprint than it is here. So you got Mark 1, Mark 1, Mark 1. Then the rest's all Mark One, and this is the canister returns. So that needs removing. Actually, all of these need removing because they're going down a level. Uh, you can get stuff not looking like spaghetti, but you have to spend a lot of time planning, and that feels like that shouldn't be... Oh, oh no, that's a sign. Yeah, yeah, just ig ignore that signage. Um, yeah, you have to spend a lot of time 
planning stuff, and uh, for some people, like, the fastidious planning just isn't fun. Thing. Arc three. Well, that's one of the advantages of using the blueprints. Um, so, but okay. So, so the way it started out is. Ignoring the bits where I got shit wrong and then had to reorder belts. So we have where the resources are going up here. And up on the side. Oh, you can't really see from here. Uh, whoop. Like on the sides of the factories, I've got the total number of resources that have to go in and out. So that then dictates the speed of the press. And with a consistent order of belts going onto the viaduct here, I know which resource goes on what. Then we've got like the mark of the belt and which direction it's going in and where it's coming from, etc. So then I set up a blueprint to copy uh, that layout at the end there, which was manually done, made any alterations I need for like fuck ups when I double check the numbers, and then deployed it along. And then all you do when it's like you say, Oh, I need to pull a belt out, is just I drop pick it. Oh, this is obsessively planning ahead. So, everything you see here, on this viaduct, right, whoop, um, so, so we've got AI limiter on the left there, high speed connector, supercomputer, radio control, computer, crystal oscillator, turbo motor, blah, 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 and we've got fuse modular frame up there, which... We can't build uh, supercomputers because I haven't unlocked it, and fuse modular frame, I haven't unlocked that yet either. But I'm planning ahead for them. So I know that when I'm making fuse modular frame, I need, like, uh... Do, 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 do. Where is it? I need that many... Upper ingots. So I accommodate that many copper ingots need to be shipped up onto the viaduct. Oh, 
No, yeah. See, that's the thing. With, like, I, I'm planning way ahead because one of the things I found when I was just doing it, um, like, as needed was uh, adding in extra belts for when, like, recipes change. That's like, you unlock an alt that's a hell of a lot better. Oh yeah, if you think that's if you think that's scary, then just you know look at all all this mess under here. So you've got all these belts coming down, and then some of them leaving. Just big giant mess. Um. So, so, so yeah, like the, the doing it as needed, it, it just became a, like a bit of a maintenance headache because I would need to say like. Oh, I need a belt to go from there to there, but I don't have, like, a resource over there yet. I'm not producing that. Or, like, I need to update the belt. I need to add a new stack. It's, it's just... Bleh. So it used to be I would have, um, like, each lane on a viaduct would be one resource, so if I need to get a whole bunch of copper ingots over there, I would have like a stack of belts just for copper ingots. And then I would like break them up. Yeah, there's the way up Good morning. The time is 9.45 a.m. Give me a second, I'm going to pause the Google assistant. Right now in Durham, it's 8 degrees and mostly cloudy. There we go. Um, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, uh, doing planning ahead with lanes per resource being produced rather than uh, resource being consumed means, like, oh, some of these Mark IV belts, or Mark, well, some of the Mark III belts as well, actually, uh, might need to be upgraded to Mark V at some point. But with the belt being laid... Uh, I can have bottlenecks production going, so I can trickle supply production of other parts being done, so I'm not just, like, stuck not producing anything of a certain parts so or can't progress. And uh, it means that when it comes to actually shipping Mark V worth of stuff from A to B, I don't need to go, like, click, 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 I just go click, 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 click. And obviously when you're upgrading a, a, a belt, you just go, oh. Click, click, click. You just ride it along. Makes upgrading belts really easy. Now, as for vehicles, I used to use trains. Because, what? Uh, okay, yeah, he, he, here's the very brief history of, of me and, and vehicles. So, I tried tractors out, uh, but this was before update 6, update 5, update 6, which, whichever update it was improved the pathfinding of them. And if you go poking around the QA site, you will see a video of me having an autopilot tractor repeatedly driving itself off a viaduct. Um, so it's like one of these types of facilities and there was a viaduct going north and it's just like the tractor would repeatedly just go Wee! to the point where I actually record uh, 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 I, I walled it in and I recorded it trying to drive itself off. So this was before the tractor rebalance so what would happen quite often is all of these tractors, uh, like I, I think I only ever got the trucks like once before I give up, like all, all of these tractors would be trying to deliver resources, falling off, and depending on where I was, they would either respawn back on the viaduct, or they would um, navigate over to the nearest access ramp. And then they'd run out of um, fuel. But I wouldn't immediately know it 
until I'd be like just pottering about, and then I'd see like, oh, there's a, a, an icon for a truck, a, a tractor not moving, so I'd zoom in, see, oh, it's just stood there in the middle, so I'd have to go refuel it. Inevitably get run over when it decides to back up rather than going forwards. And then, uh, I, by the time I found out that it ran out of fuel, I'd, I'd already run out of all the resources for the stuff it was producing. So I gave up on using tractors for a while, switched over to trains. Uh, that led to me having like these two, like the, the two halves of this facility, like way further apart because each uh, floor had a certain number of train stations it would need to have. And then I have to build all the train spirals and stuff. Uh, and eventually it got to the point where I just found I wasn't needing to have trains actually go on each floor. I would just put them all in the basement and run them up. Like, I'll run the belts up. Um, and then eventually I figured, well, like... The intervening time between setting this stuff up and actually unlocking trains, I needed to have belts running between all of the facilities. So I just gave up doing trains. So this is all belts now. Um, no trains because uh, I, I end up not needing them because oh, all of these temporary viaducts turned out to do the job well enough as is um and then it's like quite meditative to be like placing these manually so like i mean you still need to place these bits in the middle manually because the blueprint design is not big enough um so i find it quite soothing to just run kilometers long belts so i hope that answers the question Right, next thing, Mark III belt. Yep. And we got the Mark II belt. Yeah, that's going to go all the way past uh, this facility. Now, if I save this, oh, please don't tell me it. Mm. It's the blue, the original blueprint. Bollocks. That is not what I wanted to happen. What I wanted to happen was have a copy of the blueprint. It's not like I need the original blueprint anymore, because I've already laid it out, but it's good to know that now that the, that's what the blueprint designer does. That's just incredibly frustrating and disappointing. Alright, let's get this uh, blueprint dropped in. What I wanted to end up with was three separate blueprints. And because of the way the save system works, I don't have a copy of that original blueprint anymore. 
so, you know, fuck me kind of thing. Except, no, wait, I do have a copy of the original blueprint. What's going on here? Something's confusing the shit out of me. Ugh! Confusing! I do have the original blueprint. It's just that put it, like the new blueprint got put in a completely different thing. So just, uh, oh, see, this is why I completely ignored blueprints for so long. <laughs> It. Let's get new categories in. Let's see, compound side thing. Mod And we can remove these experiments. Okay, what's going on here? There we go. Uh, this isn't really the lower viaduct anymore, so if I set this to viaduct to mid. Ah, oh, see, that's refreshing. I that, that is, like, good, good to know now, that when you change the name of a blueprint, it doesn't update the original blueprint. So, yay. It's cre incredibly frustrating initially, but... Yeah. So I can't rename that. So the first viaduct I placed down was the uh, that one off in the distance, which is pretty much only shipping coal, iron, and uh, a bit of quartz. That was all placed without blueprints. This one having a crap ton more belts, of like carrying all different kind of things. I, just, like, I really want to try it with blueprints, and I'm, I'm glad it's worked out. Yeah, designer. Make all dismantle.
Brandon needs to like put that back in down there later, but I don't need them here right now. The dismantle selection filter. Love it. Just run these belts over here. And we'll do the bottom row first. Yes, and it means we can be dashing back and forth. I'll not have to worry so much about falling off. And this is the kind of thing I was on about earlier where um, I don't have to remember, like once I've built the blueprint, I don't have to remember what belt speed everything is. I just have to eye drop it. I'm gonna check. Did I actually remember to take a photo reference of that bunch of signage before I deleted it? Yes, I did. Good. Because <laughs> um, uh, that signage over in the distance, right there, is gonna get put on. Not that one. Well, might be that one. Uh, it's going to get ended up putting on either here or here. So when I'm off building the plastics facility, like, you know, when I actually build the thing out, I'll be able to look off in the distance and see uh, what order I need to build stuff up in before I get to doing uh, the blueprint side of it. Because um, what resources go where changes as stuff... Uh, leaves and enters the viaduct. Um, well, I'm used to arachnophobia mode um, being on and off. Uh, it's just the only reason I have it on is for like when people that have arachnophobia want to swing by. So like I used to be like severely arachnophobic, but I've like desensitized myself to it now. Largely, uh, still quite off-putting when you're relaxing in bed and then uh, the spider decides to dangle itself down from the ceiling right in front of your face. 
So the stingers in Satisfactory used to quite bug me. Arachnophobia mode on has distinct advantages though, because uh, the mewing stands out a hell of a lot more than whatever noise the stingers make. And uh, there is a very distinct noise the alpha stingers make before they do their leap attack. So you can uh, like basically telegraph the attacks more. So they're easier to deal with in uh, combat. So, for that reason, arachnophobia mode on is better. Right, there we go. Now, wasn't there a turbo motor resource I needed to have switch lanes? Oh, I've already done the lane switching over here. But yeah, this will have to get taken out when I put the blueprint in. Um, or at least bits of it will. But just because of how I oriented some of these belts, uh, that is a turbo motor resource, but this is the like where turbo motors are going, and because shuffling the order of resources and belts is like incredibly tedious. In a lot of cases, I have gone and switched resources around and, and gone and adjusted all of the belting and rearranged the signage and, and belting on those. Uh, for this one, it, w it was just easy to like shove it up there and then shift it over. Because obviously, uh, like th th this column here being in the way means I can't pull the turbo motor in from the left. And these two columns here are unoccupied. Well, that's your own issues with cats you have to deal with. up and then that's mark one and that matches up yay okay so the only thing that needs changing here is this stuff so what I'm wondering is if I can place the blueprint there without having to clean anything up. Oh, safe to finish. Cool.
So I'm not going to be able to leave that in place. Well, maybe I can. Right, I need to steal some plates from somewhere. How many do I need? Alright, I need 19 plate. There's 8. 16. There we go. Oh, I need one more. Sometimes I don't want to do things properly, I just want to steal the resources from things. Uh, oh, okay, he's actually going to let us do that. All right. There we go. And there we go. Now, obviously, things are going to change here because we've got this belt here goes over the top of these two, but then it's going to need to immediately drop down because there's no point in having it all the way up here. But uh, what I really need to do is go pick up my plate. Yeah, so this facility was producing um, copper sheet and quick wire. Oh yeah, and, and wire and cable. Um, but I've disconnected like the temporary um, resource supply that the beam was standing on. So at some point I am actually going to have to put the ores back in so I can actually be producing shit. Now fortunately, this main facility here uh, has its own temporary uh, copper supply. So uh, I am actually producing stuff. But I am going to run out of cable, wire and copper sheet at some point. Why do I even have monorail technology on? That shouldn't be selected. I just noticed that. I've got zero intent to unlock trains. Like some of the other uh, things that I've unlocked uh, in the hub, I've only unlocked because they give me inventory slots. Like uh, I'm only going to unlock jetpack because it gives me inventory slots, but I'm not going to use the jetpack because. Why would I need it when I've got the parachute? It's like, oh, you need the jetpack to go uphill. Well, like... So can the parachute. Only it doesn't need fuel. another blueprint design I put up. Get these gaps filled back in.
you mark one going north, and I've got that. Mark three going north. Which we already have down there, so I just need to delete the top two layers in the blueprint. See, then this is what one, two, three, four, five. So this is a plastic and rubber for a computer going over here. This is where the thing's going to change. Got a Mark IV going south. And two belts on top. Second Mark IV belt going south. We've got a Mark I belt. Also, oh no, that's going north. Okay. What lane's that one? So that'll be rubber for comps for every um, cooling unit then. And that lane is clear, as is that lane. It's all Mark 1s. Now with these two lanes being unoccupied, I could shift everything over, but it's not going to reduce the uh, total number of tiles. So I'm just going to leave them as is.
uh, these are all going north. Oh no, we got south, north, north, north. So I just need to delete one of these. Plus it'll be uh, dropping down. And then this shit's all unchanged. One, 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 one. One, one, one. Yes, fill mark one belt. Uh, sulfur and bauxite. Uh, have I got a lift that I haven't connected? That's meant to be rubber. Oh, yeah, rubber going to heat sinks. So I need to put a new lane in. Blueprint designer again, make a modification. We have unoccupied lane here. Flag was a Mark Three, but does it actually need to be Mark Three? Right. Let me do some math. I mean, make one hundred and thirty-one uh, heat sink, none of which are being warehoused. It turns out I'm not. That building anything that needs a heat sink. Uh, so we divide that by 10 for the odd that uses rubber, times it by 30, and it needs to be Mark 4. And that's how we figure out what belts we need. Math.
need a Mark IV belt going north. Any others? Nope. Oh, well, that's in the wrong bloody place, isn't it? Oh, it isn't. It just looks wrong. Because those two are really close to each other. I thought it was going in the other direction. I thought, like... I thought that belt was clipping because it, it's no, it's facing the other way. Let's get that cleaned up. This saved. to run this out then delete the six in between take those off So the next thing to do here is going to be connecting those belts over and uh, now that everything's going to be dropping down like this one will drop down here and then put signage in in front like the stuff that uh, put in late, uh, like that. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So the signage over there, there's the temporary signage I deleted earlier, and then I need to do something similar to that with the stuff that I was deleting earlier, and the new belts being merged in. So I've got an accurate idea of what I'm doing uh, later down the line.
All right. The blueprints are out. Bollocks. Mark Fawn going north. Then Mark One going north. Need to put additional walls on hold the signage. Some plastic going north. And we have Oh wait, I'm doing this wrong. That's the old style shit. I 
Quickwire going south. Hiding filter. Plastic going north to circuit build. Rubber going north to supercomputer. No, that's plastic going north to supercomputer. unit we have rubber and plastic going north to computer Yeah, I think the Mark One belt there is um I think it's a rubber for cooling system. Where's my notepad? Yeah. It's 45 unit a minute of rubber needed. Uh, but like 562.5 nitrogen needed. That's why there's... Um, Mark four belts on. We got rubber going north, then we have nitrogen. that you can see the backgrounds because of the update 8 bug, but it will eventually display what direction each tier of um, belt is going what uh, in what direction. And that is going building system. 
And then this one. Is rubber going to heat sink? And then this lane's just unoccupied. So this is the cooling system heading to turbo motor. And then we got nitrogen on top. So it's nitrogen, rubber, tank. It's not exactly consistent. Like one of the things we could do uh, here because we're starting to get space is uh, we could swap them round. So they, that belt could switch to this lane over here, and drop down over here, and then um, merge in. So over like a couple of lanes, it could you know, swap around and be consistent. But I'm gonna stuck with the problem I've made for myself. It creates an interesting thing to solve later. Right, so on top we need to grab uh that middle sign. And empty tank on the bottom. And then rubber in the middle. And that is for heavy motor. These ones done first. So we got two of rubber and one of plastic. Heavy modular frame. The enforced iron plate. next thing you do is the big massive chunky um, fuse modular frame stuff now which ones are we when yeah that's unmodified from the photo reference I took earlier so we got seven signs to stack up Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, so on the bottom we have 
good night, you shouldn't. Then we have nitric acid. Oh wait, hang on a second. That's wrong. Not that many belts. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right. Yeah, so the folder reference was taken um, before I dropped the uh, aluminium ingot line off. Because the next one up on the folder reference is aluminium ingot, but that's already merged in um, over there where that bump is. So the next one up is. Um, yeah, the third thing up is fuel canister. I need to just build myself a ladder in front of it. The next thing up is fluid tank return. Nitrogen. Got empty canister return, nitric acid, and then again, empty canister return. Well, fuel. There we go. So that there represents the stuff to the south that remains to be built. Whew. Yeah, that's not to say I can't be having these being produced because these two are already being produced um, in the main facility. Heavy modular frame. That's got that little temporary factory down there, uh, but the belting and, and assigned stuff is already up there. The assumption is that we're doing the default recipe, which, yeah, which doesn't need rubber. Um, obviously, we don't even have fuse modded fame unlocked, so we're not even going to be touching that. Same for turbo motor, heat sink, cooling system. Crystal Oscillator is using a recipe other than the rubber based one, I think. Well, I haven't unlocked it. Uh, computer, though, that's something that needs to have. Um, that's going to need to have resources injected. So, like, over here, I could be sticking a bin. That decants plastic into them lot and another bin that decants rubber into them lot. So I can just be scooting down to that starter factory over there and still having some of this shit getting produced. Let's see how long have I been streaming for? See an hour and a half. Uh, let's see, what can I do next?
Well, I suppose the next thing to do would be the R um, viaduct. Because there's a um, Actually, don't forget to... Get bauxite from lower or viaduct to upper or viaduct. I'll leave that on that notepad rather than uh, taking a sign reminder in. I'm not building high speed connector yet, so I can't unlock that. Oh, that I can unlock right now. Is that bin full of snowballs yet? I've got a floor sign for um, Nobelisks over in the distance. But I've not gotten around to getting sulfur shoved in. So it's not even producing anything. So the fact that I started this uh, playthrough in time for Fixmas kicking in this year, um, well, last year, means I kind of don't really need to bother because I can just use those for. Uh, Obelisks. He has to be keep on count looking. Right, so I've unlocked some more there. That means I can put the tickets, not the tickets, the coupons back in the um, thing. Right, yeah, that blueprint design is going to have to go. is the most expensive statue A thousand so I can get the satisfactory pioneering statue now I'm gonna like leave it until I get the golden note and then work my way down Uh, let's see, so we want to get rid of the blueprint designer down here because we don't need it anymore. Because we have the blueprint designer deployed up there. Support scaffolding taken out. Oh, wait, miss a bit. There we go.
There we go. Let's see what else can we do to clean up with. Well, I need not blisks to do that. Don't really need to scan for slugs. Do I need to scan for creatures? And that only unlocks the gun, I don't need it, so. Yeah. Pretty much done with the man for a bit. Now, is there any crash site I've left that needs unlocking that I technically know about? Nope. There's only uh, the one up top that mountain, which I haven't seen, so I can't grab it. Um, then there's these two that I've seen, but I technically don't know how to get... I know exactly how to go get them, um, but I haven't gone exploring on this playthrough. So I'm not uh, spoiling myself. You've got to get a bauxite line running up to there. And we've got to get that all um, viaduct sorted as well. And figure out where we're getting from. Oh, how are we doing for power consumption? Uh, pretty good. That's still not stabilised yet, which is weird. So, yeah, I was going to, like, get these... Oop. I was going to get these capped off, but I think I need to get um, the coral gen stability looked at.
There we go. Right, no water. that out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hang on a second, is this... I'm just going to lower the uh, audio volume down because it's noisy as hell. I think I've got this plumbed in wrong. I've got one... Two, three, four, five, yeah, bit, one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, you sort the uh, power cut issue out. So we've got some incorrect plumbing down here to fix.
That should improve the stability of the coal gem facility because uh, you know, three of them were plugged into the wrong line, which means there would have been a uh, 270e unit a minute water shortfall. That should tweak things a little. Um, so we've made two changes. We've set one of the manifolds of, of water to um, 600 unit a minute of water, despite the known issues with 600 unit minutes of water. Um, we might end up putting it back once the water pipe's actually filled up, because... Um, the 91 unit a minute of water per extractor will cause it to stay full unless there's like fluid loss due to bugs uh but yeah overall that should improve the stability which, i mean you, you can maybe see that starting to be reflected there that's not the, the instability is not as, as, as drastic but we're still good uh, power. I might need to put a few um, power storages in just to smooth out the edges because that just seems really weird the way it's working. And then it's just a case of figuring out where to actually put them. So, yeah, let's put the uh, sound back up and um, head back over there.
I need something out to mark fours.
Right. So, this bar fight stuff has to go from this level way up to there. And uh, obviously the copper, iron and cotidium that needs to go in um, down here. Uh, I can't remember if there's raw quartz down here, but there's going to be raw quartz up there. And um, over there, probably. So, yeah, we'll... I think we'll do that in another stream. Because we've, we've done a large unit of work. So, I'm happy with what I've got. So, I'm not going to pop off for an early lunch, I think. There we go. So, yeah. Uh, that's going to be all for now. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.